Hey Canucks fans, with this morning's waiver moves, the opening roster is now set. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, September the 30th. This is video number two of the day this morning. I talked very quickly about the news from the morning. Sven Berchi, along with Nikolai Godoba and Alex Vega, put on waivers, and now here's video two of the day, the ramifications of that. Now we know that the roster is set, for opening night on Wednesday in Edmonton, and we can talk about some of the line combinations and deep pairings that went at practice this morning. Also, Jim Benning talked with the media after practice about Sven, about Sven Berchi, and I will get to that at the end of this video. So very quickly, we know the goaltenders are Jacob Markstrom and Thatcher Demko. We know that the 6D and the pairings are Edler with Myers, Hughes with Tanev and Ben with Stetcher with Oscar Fantenberg returning from concussion protocol. Good news, healthy. So he's our seventh D. And then speaking of uh, returning from concussion protocol and good news, Brock Besser fully practicing as well, full contact or at least wearing the, the contact jersey or better yet, he wasn't wearing the no contact jersey. So he's ready to go as well for Wednesday night. So then you had lines like this. Very interesting. You had Pedersen with Besser and Furland, Horvat with Miller and Pearson. No surprises in the top six. Our third line was Brandon Sutter between Josh Levo and Jake Vertanen. And then the fourth line was uh, Jay Beagle with Tim Schaller and Tyler Mott. So that means Louis Erickson and Adam Gaudette were the healthy scratches or looked to be, were the extra skaters and might be the healthy scratches for Wednesday night. So there you go. There's your three extra players. You know, I've been talking for the past two weeks about is it going to be two forwards, one D, or two D, one forward. It is indeed two forwards and one D. It looks like if they if they play the way they practice today, that Louis Erickson, Adam Gaudette, and Austin Fantenberg will be the two, three extras, two forwards and one D. No surprise about Fantenberg. Erickson is at the best use of money. No, not really, but uh, he looks like to be a healthy scratch. And Adam Gaudette, I know some people will say, well, why would you even have him on the team and not play in Utica if you're just going to scratch him or, or put him in the, in the press box? Let's not overreact. It is only the opening game, and well, I'm not wishing ill will on any of our players, of course. Injuries happen. Lineup, uh, you know, matchups will happen. So maybe he gets into a game by game two or game three or game four of the season as opposed to game eight or ten. So let's, let's not read into any of these three guys, maybe Fantaberg more, but especially for Gaudette and Erickson, just because they are starting the first game, they're starting the season in the press box, doesn't mean they're going to be there for ten games straight or whatever. Uh, they could get, like I said, they could get in because of injury or because of matchups or simply maybe guys like Mott, Schaller and Vertan and those three um, might be, you know, um, might be candidates to come out after a few games, depending on how well they or not well they start the season. So there you go. The, there's your 14 forwards, your 7D, and your two goalies making up your 23 man roster. So Canucks fans, any surprises about those lines? What do you think of that? Th we know about the top six. What do you think of that third line of Sutter, Gaudet, uh, sorry, Sutter, Levo, and Vertan? I like the size and the the skill. And decent speed with on the wings there. Um, they're not obviously as offensively gifted as if Sven Berchi was there, which I'll get to in a second. But I, I like the look of that line. And I, I think Josh Levo in, in particular um, can do good things. And then the fourth line, Mott, Schaller, and Beagle, nothing sexy, nothing exciting. But they're, uh, you know, they are pretty solid. And then you have your penalty killers there. You have Sutter, you have Beagle, and you have Mott. And then one more, one more guy is uh, you know, Schaller. So they're basically your, your four, three guys on your fourth line plus at, uh, Brandon Sutter will be your, your top four penalty killers. Then you go in the power play. Uh, you know, I'm still not... Uh, I read an article about, from Thomas Drans talking to Coach Newell Brown, assistant coach Newell Brown, talking about Quinn Hughes giving the keys to power play one and Edler Myers on power play two. Yet, in the last two Canucks practices, Alex Edler's been taking reps on power play one. I talked about it in my video yesterday. So this morning, it was Edler with Pedersen, with Besser, with Miller, and with Levo in the bumper position. And then power play two was Horvat, Myers... Hughes, Furland, and Pearson. A bit more of a greasy, uh, you know, a greasy lineup there, a, a unit, so to speak. So, yes, the Canucks are trying to balance, obviously, the two units with Horvat and Hughes on the second unit as opposed to first. I'm not, again, I'm not going to freak out too much if Hughes doesn't start the season on the first power play unit. He'll get his time. Um, I, I just know that a lot of Canucks fans want it to be sooner as opposed to later. And I get it. Canucks fans, we, you know, we, we're so passionate. We want so well, so badly for the team to do well. I don't want to say it's overreaction, but there's certainly a lot of reaction, whether it's the Berchi move this morning, whether it's Quinn Hughes on the second property unit. I get it. There's passion, but I, I, I still think that Canucks fans overreact to almost everything 
And but you know, I'm, I'm glad they're expressing their their opinion and sharing their voice and their desire for the team. But you guys know, not just because I'm a, the founder of the GLCPC, but I, I like to take a more measured approach and, and try and give the, the coaching staff the benefit of the doubt. Some of you might say I'm too optimistic or too idealistic or not hard enough on the team, but that's just that's just my style, right? That's that's who I am. And I'm willing, like I said, I'm willing to give the coaches the benefit of the doubt. And they probably know a lot more than we do, although we think we know that we, uh, we, we know a lot and we know what we want, at least. And then uh, Jim Benning talked about the roster, talked about the fact that um, you know Adam Gaudet earned a spot, uh, but let's not freak out too much if he, he's starting on the season um, in the in the press box. Maybe he gets onto a third line, set him moves to the wing. So he talked about that. He talked about the fact that um, Brock Besser and Oscar Van Twigger are healthy, which is great. And really, he spent most of the time talking about Sven Berchi, which makes sense. That's what reporters were asking about. He says he um, explored the trade market for him over the past few weeks, couldn't really find a fit kind of um, hinted at he didn't think that Berchi was still 100% confident in his ability despite having a, a decent preseason maybe a little tentative and he did talk about something that I alluded to this morning that they, their team's better now with especially with JT Miller and Michael Ferlin on the wings uh, the position that Sven Berchi plays so as I mentioned earlier I and I put in a tweet I think that the Canucks felt that they have improved enough with Miller and Ferland in there as wingers in their top six that really Berchi didn't really find a spot, uh, have a spot, especially if he's not going to play this the way they want their wingers on their third line to play, i.e. guys like Josh Leval and Jake Vertanen. And you can just look at that, the fact that they're starting the season likely on that third line. Those are the kind of guys it looks like Travis Green wanted on his third line. So he said all the right things. He said if he clears waivers, he'll go down. And if he plays hard, get some confidence, get some timing back, maybe we'll see him up with the big club again sooner as opposed to later. But we shall see. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But Jim Benning did address the media and was honest and forthright as usual. You know, some people are, will go after him for bad asset management or, um, you know, whatever. It be. Oh, and that's the other thing. He also said this wasn't a cap-related move. Yes, he acknowledges they do save a bit of money, um, you know, more money if he, if he gets picked up. But a little, they still save a bit of money if he clears and then goes down. But he said that that money was not the primary factor. Is the fact that the team is evolving. They are a better team now, which I which I do agree with. And it was it was tough to find a spot for Sven Berchi. So there you go, Canucks fans. Lots to digest there, whether it's line combinations, deep pairings, no, no surprise there, power play units, or Jim Benning's reaction, his comments on the, the waving of Sven Berchi this morning. Lots to digest. Love to know your thoughts on any of all of those topics. Whatever you want to talk about, leave a comment below. Uh, even though I don't reply, I do read every every single comment. I appreciate you taking the time to comment, but I'd like to generate some conversation discussion here. What do you think of what's going on? Everything, a lot of news with the Canucks, setting the roster, setting their line combos, their deep pairings, and talking about Sven Berchi going forward. Leave a comment. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks, go.